Welcome back to the penultimate part of the DevSpace tutorial series. So in this video, we will focus on further modifying your dev container so it is optimized for development purposes. In one of the previous videos, I already mentioned that we discourage the building and pushing of a container image as part of your development cycle. We believe it's best practice to use different images for production and development. Your production image should be lightweight and only contain what is absolutely necessary to run your service. Whereas your development image will probably need tools to build, log and debug. So for that reason, we recommend for you to replace the production image as soon as your service has been deployed to the cluster. So here we have two deployments again. One is named backend and one is named payment. To replace your production image, first thing we need to do is to select the right container. Here we're using the image selector. Next, we pass in the development image as dev image. Here we're using an image based on Alpine that comes with JavaScript pre-installed. When we run the default dev pipeline, DevSpace will first build all images and then deploy all the deployments. In this example, we are using an image from Docker Hub. But if you are using an image that you built yourself, you need to make sure that it exists in your local registry because DevSpace will first deploy the production image before it will replace it with the development image. When we run DevSpace Dev, we will start development mode for all our services. DevSpace will try to find the target container and if found, will create a new deployment with the dev image and delete the old deployment. In the payment service, we are also adding a command entry point to keep the container alive. If you are using the terminal property as we're doing here in the backend service, DevSpace will automatically replace your entry point with sleep, exactly the same settings as we have done here manually for the payment service. But you can also disable that by setting the disable replace property to true. There are also other container properties you can set within the DevSpace YAML, like for example, environment variables, working directory, or resource limits. These can come in handy when you're trying to achieve consistency across many services when they are being managed by DevSpace in development mode, as DevSpace will override any prior settings on the container images or with Kubernetes. So to find out more about this, please refer to our docs. So I wanna take the rest of the video to walk you through one of our most beloved and powerful features, the instant file sync. Now the idea behind this feature is to get any code changes into your running container instantly without the need to rebuild or redeploy your container. And as a result, your development cycle becomes much faster and feedback gets to you much quicker so effectively, it will feel to you as if you're working directly on your local machine. Behind the scenes, a DevSpace helper lives in your development container that keeps a two-way sync open. And any time a file change is detected either within the container or on your host machine, DevSpace will copy any file changes directly up or downstream. Anytime DevSpace detects a change, a sync will be kicked off. You can sync changes only on startup, in both directions or only one way, or hook into the lifecycle to execute commands after a sync has happened. Now let's look at our example, which covers some of the most common use cases. Here we have defined one path mapping for each service. For the backend service, we are mapping our working directory to the container's working directory. But we are excluding all files from syncing into all directions, except for the dist folder. In the payment service, we are mapping our local working directory to the app directory inside the container. Here we are a bit more sophisticated with our usage of the sync feature. In the download exclude paths property, we define that we don't want the contents from the node modules folder to be downloaded from the container into the local machine. However, all the changes inside the node modules folder on our local machine will still be uploaded into the container. We can also pass a file to DevSpace to specify which files and folders should be excluded from the sync. Here we are passing gitignore to upload exclude file. So all the files and folders specified in the gitignore would still be downloaded from the container to the host machine, but not the other way around. We've also hooked into the sync lifecycle. So here we will trigger the npm install command only if and when we detect a change in the package JSON. There are a number of things you can do to modify the behavior of the sync feature. For example, you can set a limit on bandwidth or you can 
choose a strategy for the initial sync. I highly encourage you to check out our docs and the DevSpace Quick Start features to play around with it a little bit yourself and explore the feature more in depth. So that's it for this video. And we will see each other next time when we take working with the DevSpace YAML to the next level to align and share our best practices across multiple teams. And if you have more questions or comments, you can leave them here or join our Slack where you can talk to maintainers and users. <laughs>